Hello guys, in this video I will show you how you can build and run Linux GUI applications on Windows natively. We will not use WSL because with Windows Subsystem for Linux you get a virtualized environment. We will use a set of tools that existed for a very very long time and it's called Sigwin. With Sigwin you get this Unix-like environment where all these tools and programs were ported to Windows. It is not virtualized in any way, it runs natively and we will use those tools to build a Linux-only application on Windows natively. As always, all the necessary links are in the description as well as the timestamps so you can skip any part of the video, just move to the next timestamp. First thing we need to do, we need to install Sigwin, so let's go to their website. This is it and down there is the download link, so let's open that. Download complete. Here it is, let's install. Alright, install from the internet. Root directory is ok for all users. Download source package is here, also ok. And use proxy. Now here we need to select a download site, so choose one that is somewhere near you. I will go with this one. And now here we can pre-install some packages. Let's change the view to full. And we will need to install only one. wget. This one, the newest version. Next. Install. I don't want shortcuts on my desktop. And now let's open Sigwin. Now this is the Sigwin shell and if I look inside the folder, then you will see this Unix-like structure. And here is the home folder. Here is the folder that we are currently in. And here I can also execute some Unix commands like I would do on Linux. And that also means that we can build some apps like we would in Linux. First, to make our lives easier, I will install a package manager from my cheat sheet. Paste it in. Now this will download the app-sig package manager, which from the name you can guess works similar like the apt-get Debian package manager. Enter. Alright, install apt-sig into the bin folder. Package manager is ready, now we can use it to install some other tools. We will install git, make, cmake and the GNU compiler. Enter and let it install. Alright, now we only need to find the Linux app that we want to build. And I have chosen Crusader, which is a total commander like file manager. It isn't the easiest app to build, but I think it's a nice exercise so you can see the issues that you may run into and how to fix those. And here is the Crusader GitHub repository. And what we need to do, we need to go to code, copy this line. Back in Sigwin, let's clone the repository. Git clone and a copy link. Enter. Alright, let's see what we have. We have the Crusader folder, so let's go inside. And what's inside? We have the cloned repository. Usually when you want to build a Linux application from source, you want to create a build folder inside. Build. And then you want to build the application inside the folder. Now before we start building, we need to make sure that we have all the build dependencies. And usually you will find the dependencies inside the cmakelist.txt file. So let's find the file in the explorer. There it is. Open it. Now inside search for find package and this will give us the list of packages that we need to install and as you can see we have a few of those. So let's go from top to bottom. First we need to install the ECM package and the easiest way to find the Sigwin package is to go to the Sigwin website, go to search packages and write the package name ECM and also we can see that it is included in extra-cmake-modules and we have installed that one previously so we are sure that we have that one. Next on the list is Qt5 and it needs all of those modules here. So let's find those. I will just dock this to the right and this to the left. Now I will search for Qt5 and the name of the first module concurrent. Alright, it is inside the Qt5 core package which is also one of the dependencies and we need to search for the dash devil package and not the ones without it because the dash devil packages are needed if you want to build an application. Let's find the others first. Core we already have. GUI is the next one. So again we will go with the GUI-devil package. Next one is dbus. Also already inside the core package. Widgets. Inside the GUI package. Print support. Also inside the GUI package. And XML inside the core package. So basically we need to install only two packages. Qt5 core-devil and Qt5 GUI-devil. And I will write myself a note here. And the command that I need to install it. apt sig install lib qt5 core-devil and the other one is lib qt5 gui-devil. Alright, I will execute it afterwards. Let's see what else we need. Next one is kf5 version 5.23, the kio module. But we can also see the same thing is also required down here. This one is only telling that we need the version 2.23 or newer. 
So let's try to find that one, KF5KIO. And there is a newer version, so we are safe. And that's the same one that we need also in the final section here. Let's find the others as well. Archive, here it is, libkf5archive-devil, then bookmarks, libkf5bookmarks-devil, codex, codex-devil. You will basically need to go through all of those here and find the packages. And probably you have noticed it already. In our case, they start with lib, then the package name and dash devil. So what I'm gonna do, I will copy all of those to my notes. So we need apt-sig install, and then a new line and paste all of those here. And I know they all start with lib kf5 and they all end with devil, new line. Let's copy those. All right, now there is one that actually has a different name and that's why I said you should check all of those, doc tools. You can see this one doesn't have a dash devil package and also the naming is a bit different. So let me take this here, copy back to notes. Here it is, replace that one. And you have also noticed that we are ignoring the version numbers. We are not writing those. That's because apt-sig will always try to get the newest version. All right, are we missing something? Find package. That was the last one. Let's install those first. So copy, paste it in, enter, let it install. All right, and the second command. Now when you have a multi-line command like this, make sure that after the backslash there are no spaces because otherwise it will not work. And also I see I made a typo here. It's not Q, but G. So copy that one and paste to Sigwin. This can take some time. All right, now if everything went well, we can start building. So make sure you are in the build folder, paste the command in Sigwin. We want to execute CMake and also configure it with a few command line arguments. With the first one, we are saying that we want to install the application inside the slash user directory. With the second one, we are specifying the compiler, which should be GNU G++ because we are building a Linux application. With the next one, we are specifying the standard, which I'm more or less guessing right now, the 2011 standard. If you set a wrong one here, then you will get compiler errors, like some syntax errors, and probably then you need to change the standard to something else. But for now, I will go with this one. And then I'm setting that the build should be a release. I don't want any testing. And the Crusader folder is one folder out. All right, let's try it. And now we get a lot of warnings, which are not so relevant. But we also get an error right here and it says that it could not find the get text which is actually a package that is missing so if i search here for get text and try to find it here it is get text devil so we will also need to install that one so let's do apt sig install get text devil on Linux distributions, a lot of those packages are installed by default. So you don't really need to do anything, but in Sigwin, you need to install everything by hand. Let's try again. All right, so it found everything except for the zlib library. Let's see if we can find that one, zlib. As you can see, it is a bit hit or miss. Here it is, zlib-devil. Let's install it, apt sig install zlib-devil. All right, now the third try. And it finally worked, configuring done, generating done. And now we are ready to actually compile it. So write make, and I will specify with dash J, the number of cores that I will use and enter. It is building something, so that's good. All right, the build went through with no errors. Now let's install Crusader, make, install, enter. Everything installed, now we can try to execute it. Crusader.exe. So this is a Windows native program, enter, and it's not working. So although crusader.exe is a Windows native app now, it still expects to find an X server, which makes sense because we build it from a Linux source and Linux applications just expect to find an X server running. Fortunately for us, there is an X server for Windows. We can actually choose from multiple ones. For instance, we can install an X server here in Sigwin, which is actually really easy to do. I will copy the command from a cheat sheet. So there it is, you need to install OpenSSH, xinit and xorg server and then you will get the X server from Sigwin. But in my case, I already installed a different one, so I will not execute this. Let me minimize those. And I have a launcher here on my desktop. This X server is called vcxserve. The download link will be in the description. You just need to download it, install, and then if you run the launcher, 
I will just choose multiple windows, start with no client, default settings are OK, and finish. Now the X server should be up and running, start Crusader again, but this time we need to specify the display environment variable, display number 0, which is the default display number of the X server I'm running, Crusader, and enter. And now it looks like we still have some runtime dependencies, like for instance the system icon theme Oxygen is missing, and also Dbus is missing, so we need to install both of those. I will just copy the command again from my cheat sheet, paste it in, and this will install Oxygen icons and also the Dbus x11 dependencies. It's done, now let's try to start Crusader one more time. And look at that, welcome to Crusader. Now let's finish the introduction. Here Crusader was trying to search for some installed tools that it needs for some of its features. Afterwards we can go and install those. Now here again it found some archiving packages and then a lot of those are missing. Configuration also ok for now. No text editor found. Well, Kate is not installed, but we can configure everything afterwards. And look at that, here it is, Crusader, working natively on Windows. Cool stuff. Now let me close it. And that's how you build and run a Linux application on Windows natively. But now you may say, this is not how I want to run my applications on Windows. I don't want to use Sigwin. I want an icon on my desktop. Of course, you don't need to use Sigwin. Let's see how we can do this, but first let's install those packages that were missing in Crusader. So this will install a lot of those tools. Enter. And I will also install a console application, console with a K. Enter. Because this one can also be used inside Crusader. Alright, we are basically done in Sigwin, so let's close this. Okay. And now let's find the Crusader EXE, which should be inside bin in my case. There it is, and I will create a shortcut and drag it to my desktop. All right, this is Crusader. And now if I try to start it, you will notice that nothing happens. That's because we need to pass the display environment variable to this one. Not only display, but also the other environment variables that are present in the Sigwin environment. So the easiest way to do this is just to add those to the Windows environment variables, environment variables. And now here under system properties, go to environment variables. And now add those to your user, click new, display, value will be display number zero, okay. Now the second important variable is path, we already have that one here, so click on it, go to edit. Here we will add all the different paths where the tools can be found for Crusader to use. So the first one is this one, the bin directory, let's add it here. Next one is user backslash bin, then we have user backslash local backslash bin and now the same thing also with sbin user sbin and user local sbin that's it okay and okay now let's start crusader and look at that here it is one important thing the x server still needs to be running you cannot get around it you need to launch this first and then you can use any app that depends on it like for instance now this crusader app but you don't need to use sigwin or the command line that's awesome Let's see if everything is working here. Settings, configure Crusader. Let's go to dependencies. It has recognized some of those, but it's still missing the diff utility. Let's find it. Under bin, kdiff3, that's it. Open, all right. Packers, it has recognized those, that's all right. Let's go to general. Apply changes, yes. Now console with a K is our default console, that's okay, we installed it previously. And the viewer and editor, is the built-in internal editor. We can leave it like this or even use Notepad++ from Windows, but I think this one is good enough. Let's see if everything is working. So let's say I want to open a terminal here. The shortcut is F9. Here it is, console at the root level, that's right. And what's inside, that's also right. Okay, let's see if I can compare some files. For instance, this one and this one. File, compare. There it is, kdiv3. Compare is working. Can I view a text file? The shortcut is F3. Yes, it opens the internal viewer, so I cannot edit anything in there. If I want to edit, then the shortcut would be F4. Yes, it's working. Beautiful. Can I open an image here? If you try to double click it, then this one opens, which is not resized properly. And the thing with Sigwin is that it doesn't have default applications. So what you can do is to run sig start here and with this one you will let Windows decide what to do with the file. You can also try to remember it, but unfortunately this doesn't work as well. 
Let's just try the six start exe here and now Windows should decide what to do with it and here it is. And that's about it, Crusader is a very complex program and as you can see you still need some workarounds for some features. But anyways, we built it from scratch from a Linux repository and it's working natively on Windows. So it is possible and it was a nice exercise. That's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more content like this, then please give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.